Well, good day, my friends. Your old pal, Jordan the Lion, and my beautiful girlfriend, Katie. Hey, everyone. And we are coming to you from Ohio. We've been hanging out with Papal for the last couple days, not making any videos, just supporting him, talking to him, keeping him company. But unfortunately, uh, Katie has to fly back today, and I'm going to go drop Jaw off at my home. And so we're gonna go on a little day road trip. So on the way to the airport, I actually thought of something I've wanted to go vlog, and I know Katie would love to do it as well. Katie, does the name Peg Entwistle mean anything to you? It sure does, actually. Wh who is it? She was the woman who jumped to her death from the Hollywood sign. Very good. That was, uh, I did that vlog very early on, like my, my first year, uh, she talked about that at the Hollywood sign, but she's actually surprisingly buried in Cincinnati. So we're gonna go stop off and pay our respects today. So Days with Jordan the Lion, you all, Katie and Ja, and a goodbye to Papaw, begins right now. Hey there, buddy. You're well aware that you're not going on Route 66, but are you ready to go for a road trip with me for a day and a half? We're gonna take mommy to the airport and you and I have a little bit of driving to do. Let's do it. Well, unfortunately we got over there and they were closing the gates for the day. Mm -hmm. So we cannot do that vlog. We'll save that one. We'll do that together in the future because you know a lot about her as well. I love that. There's a lot of interesting facts, a lot of really neat people who tie into it. I think it's a story that you guys will enjoy hearing sometime. Well, Joster Mommy is off at the airport, heading back home, and now it's time for you and I to work our way south, and I'll get to meet up with Mommy at the end of June. I'm excited. Not excited to say goodbye to you, though. He and I have been on the road together since before Easter was the last time we were home. So it's been quite some time. And uh, yep, it's gonna be quite some time before I get back there. Since we're going through Lexington, we're gonna go ahead and swing off and visit one of my favorite actors and comedians. Does the name Ernest P. Worrell mean anything to you, Ja? That is a bluegrass bus bench. It is Kentucky. Here we are at Lexington Cemetery. Been here once before to visit this guy. Love Jim Varney. This also happens to be one of my favorite cemeteries to come to. It's just old and beautiful and peaceful. Oh, that's cool, that little kid with the umbrella. It's Hitley. The name's Hitley Lamar. These are all Civil War veterans. These are all people that fought in the Civil War with an address by President Lincoln. Gettysburg address on that plaque to the left. The way I remember where he's at is I remember this little walking bridge over here to the left. And he's right past here. So from that little bridge that we saw when we were driving, if you walk right over here, my memory served that he was in the front row. Isn't that a weird way to say in it, front row, I guess? <laughs> I also seem to remember it being this dark headstone over here. Richard Little? Ironic name. Yep, here he is. The great James Albert Varney Jr. We knew him primarily as Ernest. For just around the block, in order to save this much on a new Tyson's Toyota, you might call this phenomenon pizza logic. I do. And Slinky Dog from Toy Story. He had a great cadence and a great voice. Absolutely amazing. And just an unbelievable comedic timing sense. 
He was raised here in Lexington, went to school here, and then afterward went and did like summer theater jobs and worked on his craft and everything. He was actually a very, very good actor. I mean, beyond just being earnest, I think sometimes people can just think, oh, well, you know, you stumble on a great funny voice or character. Or no, he was actually like a Shakespearean actor as well. Here's the other side. It says, suffer the little children to come unto me. Jim's story was not easy, that's for sure. You can see over here, there's another Varney. Take a look at that, see, I believe that was his parents that were buried out here as well. Yes, James A. Sr. and Luis. I love that when people put the date that they were married. 1938, so here's Jim right over here. Yeah, he didn't have it easy. He went out to Hollywood, tried to be a comedian, an actor. He got on the Johnny Cash show. He did some things here and there, but nothing that really stuck. And I, you know, living out in Los Angeles for so long, I, I started hanging out at the comedy store and got to meet people that had performed back when Jim was at the comedy store and they said he was absolutely amazing. One of the best they had ever seen. One of the people there who was a real tough critic, he was like one of the door guys. He once told a friend of mine, you are the worst comic I've ever seen in my life. My friend said, well, who's the best you ever saw? And he said, Jim Varney. So there you go. Jim went out to Hollywood, tried to make it as a stand-up comic and just wasn't having enough success to support his family. So he came back to the Nashville, Tennessee area where he had done some acting before. He had done some commercials and things like that before and just got a regular job. He started working, doing regular jobs and then his friend John Cherry called him and John Cherry had used Jim in a commercial before playing a drill instructor. It said, hey, I got this amusement park that wants to make a commercial, but they don't want to show the amusement park. And I want you to be this crazy neighbor telling his neighbor about this awesome day he had at the park. And that's how it all started for Ernest. They used a fisheye lens to film the commercial and Ernest was just this lovable character. He was a know-it-all who was kind of a dimwit and you like to see him. He always ended up hurting himself. He always talked to his friend Vern, always talked down to his friend Vern, but it just the commercials were so great and it ended up that commercial was such a success that, got, like I said, the guy was trying to raise money for his amusement park, but so he didn't want to show the park itself and he had Jim as this excited fan. People loved that character and other companies that had products like it. So he started getting hired for dairy farms and ice creams and squirt. And he was making commercials for all kinds of products. Made with delicious, nutritious, challenge buttermilk. See, it's the one with a little elk on the label. Only it ain't elk milk, it's cow's milk. I mean, who'd want to milk an elk? Pancakes on parade. You better believe it. They were making mainly at John Cherry's house. So these guys were like partners in crime and they ended up making hundreds of commercials. Important announcement from Brahms. The biggest scoop of ice cream ever placed on a cone comes from Brahms. It is the most delicious treat known to humanoids. The point to where Ernest was sought after and he was making the circuit going around to conventions and different uh, meet and greets with people all over the country and he actually was at the Indy 500 and it was Michael Eisner who was there supporting Mickey Mouse because he was the head of Disney at the time, saw the crowd reaction to Ernest and said, we have to make a movie with this guy. And the cool thing about it is they negotiated it for a year before they came upon Ernest Goes to Camp, but they kept the same formula. It was still John Cherry doing the directing. It was still Jim Varney and John Cherry working on the script and everything together coming up. So it was great. And they ended up making a lot of these movies. They made a couple of them that went into the theaters that you could see, but it ended up spinning off into a little kids TV show that ended up giving Jim an Emmy Award, even though the show was canceled after its first 13 episodes. But that's actually what made me think of wanting to come here and visit Jim Varney today.
His show was called Hey Vern, It's Ernest. And I loved it. And the reason that it always, or that it popped into my memory is that, you know, those of you who have been following my channel, my grandfather has had some health issues. It started out with just an innocent um, missing a step. Uh, just anything that any one of us can do. In fact, two days later, I tripped at his home and broke my toe. So I even told him, I said, anybody could, that could happen to anybody. Starting to make me think of all the things that he and I did together and all the times that he helped me that, you know, he didn't have to. And one of them was I had a paper route when I was in sixth grade. And when I got the paper out, I didn't know that the Sunday papers were insanely thick full of ads. And so when I took the route on and everything, the first Sunday, I found that I could not physically carry enough papers and deliver them to get done in time. And so my grandfather decided to come out and help me every weekend. Really nobody in my household wanted to get up early at 6 a.m. to help me do it. They kind of felt like that was my responsibility. And when I told my grandpa that I was having trouble with it, he said, well, I'm already up. I'll come over and help you. Well, he did it the first Sunday. And then the following Saturday, when I got on my bike to go out and pick up the papers, he was waiting out in front of my house. And I said, Papa, I don't need you on Saturdays because Saturdays are the easiest day. I just needed your help on Sunday. And he said, that's okay. I'm already up. How about I help you on Saturday and Sunday? And we would do this together every Saturday and Sunday. And every single time after we finished, he would drive me over to Hardee's. This was his idea, and he would always get me a breakfast Frisco sandwich, and then would take me home. Uh, if it was Saturday, I would stay home, and I would turn on Hey Vern, It's Ernest, and I would watch that. Those were really great memories of my childhood of doing the newspapers with my grandpa. So they made the first Ernest movie, that was a success. They had the TV show, that was a success. So then they started working on the sequel, which was Ernest Saves Christmas, and they had, you know, a whole string of movies after that. But he was initially kind of concerned because even though he loved doing Ernest, and if people ran into him on the street, he would just at the drop of a hat turn into Ernest for them because he knew that's what they wanted. But he was afraid that maybe because he was doing it so much that it would hurt his career as far as being a character actor. And he ended up getting some good character stuff like playing Jed Clampett on the Beverly Hillbillies movie, as well as many other things where he could actually be in, do those characters that he had created. That was one of the great things about him. Not only the cadence of Ernest, but he had a knack for not, do, it wasn't impressions, but he would create characters based off of people he had met or known, and, and he, they were just so flushed out. And that's so amazing if you think about a guy who was doing a little character for little one minute commercials, was able to turn that into a full-fledged character that people would want to see in movies. I think that says a lot about the relationship between Jim Varney and John Cherry. But the, um, the sad thing is when they were making the last movie, the Army movie, John Cherry could tell that there was something wrong with Jim. He could tell the energy was low and they ended up losing Jim not too long after. He was a lifelong smoker and of course that was unfortunately, you know, maybe what gave him his beautiful tone to his voice and everything, but it eventually ended up taking his life too. God, he was just such a, I mean, I think maybe it's the joy of being a kid from the eighties, but seeing people like Pee Wee Herman and Jim Varney, these guys created something that was so likable and so funny that even now people love them and it's, it's, the comedy has not gotten watered down over time. The characters still have their charm. So it's says a lot about Jim Varney and what he was able to create. Rest in peace, sir. Know what I mean? Well, it was a great time to stop by and pay our respects to Jim Varney and just, you know, the great memories of your life when you, when you think of them, it, that's actually, like I said, that was what made me come by here was just thinking about that one little great time of my life of doing those newspapers with my grandpa and always remembering Ernest being a part of that. So Hey there, handsome fella. I know you're tired, but do you want to say goodbye to everybody? Because it's going to be quite some time before they see you. Hopefully I'll get to see you before that, but I'm gonna be traveling for about a month, so why don't you say goodbye to everybody? Say you'll see them soon.
Okie dokie. Even though we're going to continue traveling south, I think I'm going to call it a day here. I want to thank Stacy Richardson, Kristen Dewey, Patrick Hardison, Mandy Childress, and Auntie Elizabeth Martinez for becoming my newest Patreons and helping to support the adventures in this channel. Thank you all for watching. We will see you all next time from somewhere else, unfortunately without jaw. But uh, yeah, we will see you next time. Have a great night. Goodbye, everyone. Know what I mean? Yeah.